If you only go back a little less than two years ago, both Shaka Smart and Marquette had some pressing issues. Smart had just lost to 14 seed Abilene Christian in the first round of the NCAA tournament despite having the most talented roster in his Texas tenure, and Marquette was teetering towards irrelevance after finishing 13-14 and 14 and firing head coach Steve Wojciechowski after seven seasons and only two NCAA tournament appearances. Both Marquette and Smart needed a reset, and on March 26, 2021, they both got one. Smart, known for his energy, was the perfect fit for a program that seemed to lack it over the last few seasons. And in year one of the Smart era, the Golden Eagles were back in the NCAA tournament. And while they did get boat raced in the first round by a North Carolina team that went on to almost win a national championship, the seeds were planted for Marquette to once again have the level of success they had with coaches like Tom Crean and Buzz Williams in the early parts of the 21st century. And this year, Marquette has been awesome. The Golden Eagles are currently ranked 16th in the latest AP poll, have the country's number one ranked offense per Bart Torvik, and boast a record of 16-5 with wins over Baylor, UConn, and Providence. Despite being picked to finish an uninspiring ninth in the Big East after losing their top two scorers from a year ago in Justin Lewis and Daryl Morcel, Marquette is actually on pace to be a better team than last year, as they are currently projected to earn a four seed in the NCAA tournament compared to the nine seed they got in 2022. Given Marquette's play style and personnel, I think the Golden Eagles have a legitimate chance at making a Final Four for the first time since Dwayne Wade carried them there back in 2003. And if your team is unlucky enough to draw Marquette in the tournament, then there's only one thing I recommend you do. Pray. 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 The key to Marquette's success this season has been balance. They typically play nine guys every game, but no player has a usage rate over 26%, and they have four players scoring in double figures with a fifth, David Joplin, scoring 9.7 points per game. Marquette's roster has a little bit of everything. They have a versatile big guy in Oso Iguodaro, they have big wings in Olivier Maxence Prosper and the aforementioned Joplin, and they have high volume scoring guards like Cam Jones. With all of that though, the most important player in the Marquette program is point guard Tyler Kolick. Kolick started his collegiate career at George Mason, where as a freshman he averaged close to 11 points a game on 39% shooting, along with around 3 assists per game as well. After winning the Atlantic 10 Rookie of the Year award, Kolick decided to transfer and wound up in Milwaukee as part of Shaka Smart's first team at Marquette. Now, last season, Kolick did one thing extremely well. Pass. Pass. No! Don't, don't pass. pass. No, no, no. Don't, don't pay. No, he didn't pay. He didn't pass. Hey, just pass. throw out a guess. Any guess. Come on. The then sophomore averaged around 6 assists per game and showcased an elite sophistication in terms of vision. But he didn't really do anything else at that high of a level offensively. He averaged 6.7 points per game on 32, 28, 81 shooting splits and really wasn't a scoring threat at all for Marquette. This year though, Kolick has evolved into one of the best point guards in the country and Marquette's most valuable player in the process. Through 21 games this year, he's averaging a little over 10 points per game on much improved 47, 33, 81 splits and his newfound ability as a scorer has only enhanced his effectiveness as a distributor, as he's dishing out 7.9 assists per game, which is third in America, while also cutting down on his turnovers from a year ago as well. His 37.7 assist rate is a top 10 number in the country, and he just always seems to make the right play. In college, having a point guard that can dictate the game on several levels is a massive but rare advantage and Kolick gives Marquette just that. He's absolutely lethal in ball screens as he can attack defenses in a variety of ways. He can turn the corner and finish over defenders like he does here or he can shoot out of these ball screens as well, like here. He's comfortable hitting the roll man as a pick and roll passer, like he does here with a slick one-handed pass to Oso Iguodaro, and he can also use ball screens to find open teammates on the weak side of the floor. Watch here how Kolick will reject the screen and then get to the middle of the floor where he looks off the Baylor defender and finds an open David Joplin for three. His feel is also off the charts, as he executes passes that few players at this level can even process. But again, his passing has reached another level because of his increased efficiency, specifically at the rim. This year, Kolick is converting around 61% of his shots at the rim per CBB analytics, and while this number is classified as slightly below average for Division I players, it does represent an improvement of over 15% from last year, where he was only making 46% of his shots around the basket. Kolick's newfound ability to create rim pressure with his finishing allows him to warp defense in an even more advanced way, and it's what makes Marquette's offense so efficient. Pairing with Kolick in the backcourt is sophomore guard Cam Jones. 
Standing at 6'4", Jones serves as Marquette's leading scorer as he's averaging 16.4 points per game on 46-37-74 shooting splits. Jones showed really encouraging signs as a freshman as he took the role of a microwave scorer while playing alongside the likes of Lewis and Marcel, but this year he's emerged as Marquette's top option when it comes to scoring, as he's a fearless shot taker with legit craft around the rim who just finds ways to put the ball in the basket. Jones shoots an absurd 74% at the rim and 55% from the mid-range, and this is due to his shiftiness as a ball handler and his composure as a decision maker. He's extremely skilled at using his body to create separation around the basket. Watch here how he uses a spin move to neutralize Baylor's Keontae George before finishing with the left hand. His ability to get downhill and finish is accentuated by his threat level as a shooter, as Jones is comfortable shooting off the dribble or off the catch, and he'll launch these at any given time, as he has the ultimate green light to try and punish defenses. Together, Kolick and Jones combine to elevate Marquette's backcourt to one of the most dominant ones in the country, as their games are perfectly suited for each other, and they are both cognizant of what they do well on the floor. In addition to the guards, the Golden Eagles also have a pair of legitimate NBA prospects in their frontcourt with 6'8 wing Olivier Maxens Prosper and 6'9 forward Oso Iguodara. Prosper started his career at Clemson, where he played just under 10 minutes a game in his one year as a Tiger before transferring to Marquette. In his second year in Milwaukee though, Prosper has evolved into one of Marquette's most versatile weapons. The forward is a rangy defender who grabs a steal per game, and he's also a much improved offensive player, as he's currently averaging 14 points a game on all-around efficient percentages. Prosper is also a massive threat in transition, as his 3.8 fast break points per game ranks second in the Big East behind Xavier Sule Boom, and in the half court he has a herky-jerky driving style that keeps defenders off balance and helps him get to the rim with ease, where he's finishing on around 77% of his attempts. Oso Iguodaro, on the other hand, started his career at Marquette in 2020 and elected to stay with the program despite the coaching change that took place after his freshman year. And it's safe to say he made the right call because he's improved in every single season. As a junior, Iguodaro is having his best year yet as he's averaging 12.6 rebounds, 3 assists, 2 steals, and a block per game. He might be Marquette's most well-rounded player too, as he has a wide range of skills that go well with his size and position. Iguodaro actually has the second highest assist rate on the team behind Kolek, and his feel as a passer opens up a lot of options for Marquette's offense, as they love running him on the perimeter where he can hit cutters and execute triple handoffs. Here, he'll slip a nice bounce pass into a cutting Stevie Mitchell for an easy layup. Defensively, Iguodaro has great feel, as his near 3 stocks per game leads the team. His timing as a rim protector makes up for any lack of size he may have at the 5 position, and he's also an efficient scorer, as he hits 67% of his field goals, although most of these come around the basket. Marquette's auxiliary weapons also make key contributions to this team. Guard Stevie Mitchell is the team's best point of attack defender, as he averages a steal and a half per game and hounds opposing ball handlers. David Joplin provides a scoring punch off the bench, as his 6'7 wing is hitting 38% of his threes this year, and guards Chase Raw and Sean Jones can both hit key shots and make important plays defensively. Overall, Marquette just has a lot of weapons that can be used whenever they really need them. With the passing of Kolick, the scoring of Jones, the versatility of Prosper, and the feel of Iguodaro, Marquette has a loadout of talented and smart players that know their role and execute at a very high level. Combine this roster with Shaka Smart's classic defensive philosophy that keeps opponents on their heels with their sporadic pressing and switching, and Marquette looks like an extremely dangerous team heading down the stretch this season. And I know for certain that I would not want to see this team in the NCAA tournament. And when you consider where this program was just two years ago, I think it's safe to say that a lot of Marquette's prayers have definitely been answered. Thanks so much for watching and give me your thoughts below.